As I said, money must have transferability. What's there in this point? We're on page number 25 of money and banking class 10. Uh, characteristics number 6, it says money must have transferability. Now, in order to understand transferability, you need to understand that the evolution of money. Money evolu evolution, money ka kaha se hua hai. As we had seen barter system se leke, animal standard se leke, coin se leke, then gold and silver. It, it was a lengthy process and it was always difficult for everybody to, to transfer money from one place to another place as we discussed in our previous classes that there were risks associated with that. We have discussed this whole Now you see, uh, under the characteristics of paper money, one of the most important characteristics that it has, it is it's being transferable. You know, money can be, uh, paper money is, is transferable. Uh, we have uh, online marketing these days. These are the aspects, modern aspects, uh, we, we shall discuss later on. Let, let's look at this point. Money must have transferability. Trade and commerce means business organizations and the marketplaces where the exchange of commodities and goods happen. It's expanding day by day and it, it's ex expanding uh, over all the continents, uh, all over all over the world, and because of that, the market area is uh, is being extended. It's 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 getting bigger every single day, and because of that, the transaction to settle the transaction between one individual between among the consumers has become a problem. You see, um, if we didn't have paper money, if we had another sort of money, it would have been difficult for us to carry money from one place to another place because of its being the heavy factor. Uh, but, but because of paper money, this problem was solved. Q solve for paper money because paper money is, uh, is not heavy first and it can be carried from one place to another place. So money should have transferability and this problem was solved when paper money was introduced for the first time. Because markets became, uh, grew bigger, uh, it, it was a it was a problem for all the producers, for for all the individuals, for all the businessmen, to make the transactions subtle, to make the transaction much quicker. If money lacks transferability, you know, if if, if money does not have transferability, then it will be a big problem. You cannot transfer money from one place to another place, from one individual to another individual. Then the bigger transactions, you know, you, you can never grow um, in, in, in your marketing skills, you know, that, that can never happen. So because of that, one of the most prime important characteristics that money should have is its transferability. In today's monetary and banking system, it is not even necessary to physically transfer money to settle transactions. You know, if you look at modern transaction, uh, transaction system, it is not important for us to physically even send money. It's, it's, that's not even necessary right now. We have online marketing and uh, we have uh, so many uh, transaction uh, transaction apps. We can do, we can transfer money from one individual to another individual without much hustle. Payment may be made through adjustment of bank accounts. Agar hum uh, apps ki baat na kare, if, if we just talk about the the bank accounts, you know, uh, money can be sent from one bank account to another bank account. That, that's very easy, and that means money has transferability. And money has transferability means paper money has transferability. Payment may be made through adjustment of bank accounts. Credit cards and debit cards are being uh, increasingly used to to settle transactions. In, in today's world, we, we are using credit cards, we are, we are using debit cards. I have talked about the difference between the two in, in our previous class. Uh, and because of that, in a transaction has become much easier nowadays. You don't have to carry a whole lot of money with you if you want to go um, and, and, and if you want to buy something. You, know, you don't have to carry a lot of, a huge amount of money with you. What more do we have here? Uh, core banking facilities or online payment may also be made to settle transactions. You see, we have banking facilities right now. Many banks have many apps and by using and utilizing, by knowing how to access these apps and by knowing the online payment methods. For, for, for online payment methods, we have many apps. We have many apps and if you know how to use, if you know how to, how to safely do the transaction, 
the transaction can be done within a fraction of a second, within a minute or so. So, iske wajeh se, the, the characteristics that they are saying here that money is transferable, money should have the quality of transferability, it has, paper money has that. Now, let's go to point number seven. Uh, please keep in mind that if you have any question, you must uh, note it down. And once we finish, I'll take your questions. Money must have divisibility. Have I talked about these things? Feels like I already talked about these things. Anyways, high value money may be converted into low value money. I've talked about that money should be div dividable and how money can be, uh, money is divisible. We, we've, we've talked about all these things in our previous classes. Uh, let's talk about them again in today's class. Money must have divisibility means money should be able to change into smaller units into bigger units for example if you if i start from one rupee coin uh, I, I can go up to I, up to 2000 rupee note it what does that mean that means money has uh, divisibility money can be can be divided you see high value money may be may be converted into low value money so if you have a high value money which means if you have a bigger note that that bigger note can be converted into us into many uh, smaller units or if i may say in other words smaller notes coins may have to perivartan kar sakte there is money to settle transaction of all values high or low and because of that money solves all the problems all the sorts of transactions that we have in the market low value se leke ekdam upper value tak jitne bhi uh, transactions hai 5 rupees se leke 50 crore tak Jitne bhi transactions say all these trans transactions can be done because money is divisible money has higher units money has middle units and money has uh, lower units as well lack of divisibility of commodity money was another major problem of the barter system you see in barter system that was the that, that was one of the biggest problems and we we've already dealt with that we've talked about that how what were the problems in barter system in barter system uh, this Money being its money, money's characteristics. One of the characteristics of money that was divisibility. It was lacking there. Barter system, it is neither. And because of that, barter system was a complete failure. But with paper money, we don't have, we don't have such a problem. Do we have Eliha with us? I don't see her. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Uh, yeah, so money has uh, divisibility uh, because uh, higher units can be transformed into lower units and this problem, th th this was not a solved thing with barter system because of that barter system, one of the, one of the first uh, systems of money failed, brutally it failed and it, it, it was okay when population was, was less. Us samay mein sab sab thik tha. Money can settle a transaction of 50 paise or a transaction of 50 crore, as I said earlier. 50 paise se leke uh, up to 50 crore, any problem, any transaction that can, be, that, that can be solved with money right now. Point number eight now. Uh, money must have stability of value. If the value of money continues to fall all the time, money will fail to act as the store of value. Now, how will the value of money fall if we have bigger notes in the market? For example, um, a couple of years ago, uh, the biggest note that we had, it was a thousand rupee note. And all of a sudden they introduced 2000 rupee note. It means the value of money has gotten down in the markets. Uh, also, if I compare the lifestyle that I had when I was a kid like you and the lifestyle that, that, that you guys have, it's completely different. You know, if I, if I give you a 500 rupee note and I ask you to do a number of things, uh, you cannot do. But uh, in my times, if I was given a 500 rupee note, I could do a lot of things, you know, a lot of things I could do at that particular period of time. It means what? If the value of money continues to fall all the time, Agar gire, if, if, uh, jo matlab, suppose for example, you know, if you used to get something at that price level 
and you, you don't get that at that price level anymore, what does that mean? It means the value of money has gotten down. You, in order to buy that product, you need to put more money now. If you would have bought a chocolate with 10 rupee note and now you go to the shop and I need to buy the same chocolate with 20 rupees, what does that mean? Money's value has come down. Money ka jo value hai wo niche hai. And if, if the value of money comes down, if it falls in an economy, uh, money will automatically fail to act as a medium of value. Fail kar dega wo. Uh, in In Germany, uh, when the value of money fell sharply or the price level rose quite rapidly, people eventually refused to accept German money and a new currency had to be introduced. You see, a German is an example they gave uh, where there was a rapid fall of money. In German, when there was a fall of money, uh, people uh, refused to accept the German currency. money. Hum accept nahi karte, hum nahi maate. This is what people said at that point of time. Also, in their country at that time, the, the price rise was a, was a huge thing. There was a great rise in the price of commodities. And because of that, people said, we don't accept this amount of money, this, this currency, German currency. So here, that money should have stability of value. That money, uh, suppose if... We, you cannot certainly rise the price of a commodity in the market. You can't do that. If you, if you do that, the value of money in the market, the value uh, added against, against that product will come down. So German is an example for that. Money ka jo, money ko jo hai, stable karke le jana padta hai. Uh, and, and economist of, of our country, rapidly price rise different topics people write articles and, and when you read those articles you, you try to you come to know what the problem hai. it is to be noted that characteristics of money are not substitutes for one another money must have all the characteristics simultaneously now after reading all, all the eight characteristics you might be thinking that uh, it is a it is a it is a substitute. One characteristics is a substitute to another characteristics. Money jo hai, uska stability hone ke liye sare ke sare characteristics usme hone chahiye. It means eight of the characteristics must be there in order for that to be called as money. Agar nahi hai, to bilkul bhi nahi ho sakta hai money. Okay. Function of money. Money performs four different functions. It's the four functions. Uh, there is a couplet which runs that follows. Money is a matter of function. Functions for a medium, a measure, a standard, a story. So this is just like a saying that it has. That money has four functions. Uh, one of the functions is money acts as a medium of exchange because you, you recognize paper money as a form of money and by giving that paper money you get commodities from the market. Second is uh, it is a measure you know uh, uh, with, with money you take a measurement of how much of wealth do, do we have. It is also a standard uh, that, that has been accepted uh, throughout the country and it is also it, it does have store value as well you can store money in the banks you can store money in your house you can store money in different forms uh, also you can convert money into gold and silver and, uh, and even in diamonds and we can we can save money so this is just a saying that money has primarily four functions it, it acts as, as a medium as a measure a standard and a store let's uh, elaborately read these things. Money performs the function of a medium of exchange. Let's see that. You know, how does it works as a medium? Because as I said, you know, uh, the things that are written 
on a piece of paper makes that piece of paper more valuable. But if that thing is not written on that piece of paper, and if, if I just go on coloring a piece of paper exactly the size of a 2000 rupee note, and, and if I put my signature and give it to a shopkeeper and ask him, you know, this is a 2000 rupee note, accept it, that's not going to happen, you see. There are rules and regulations regarding that. So money being paper, right now we have paper money, but it has certain jurisdictions that Reserve Bank of India has put on it and it has some unique codes, it has some unique characteristics in, associated with it. It acts as a medium of exchange. Even in barter system we found that money uh, had, a, had a medium of exchange, even in animal standard, in coinage, in other forms of uh, money we have, we have found that um, it always acted as a medium of money, medium of exchange because it is something when you exchange this, when you give this to somebody, you get other commodities, other things that you need for your life. Let's let's find out. Money money performs the function of a medium. So one of the functions of money is that it acts as a medium. Now money can be a few things. We have dealt with the evolution of, evolution of money, and we have known that a few things can be money, and they had been money. Now we have come down to paper money. Uh, and, and that works as a medium of exchange. When you give that piece of thing to somebody, in, in, against that piece of paper you get an amount of thing and government has fixed uh, how much you can get. Like the store value is fixed for that. In barter system, commodities are directly exchanged against commodities. So in barter system, we used to exchange commodities against commodities. Uh, we talked about that. You, you produced uh, potatoes and I produced rice and that's what we exchanged between one another. That's that's what barter system was. Uh, in a money economy, commodities are indirectly exchanged through money. But uh, when money was introduced for the first time after barter system, uh, things were exchanged uh, uh, w w when somebody produced money. Well, something that was accepted as, as, as the form of money that could be a goat, animal standard, that could be gold, that could be silver. Or that could be a coin made out of silver and gold. When uh, after barter system, whenever people produced money, which means any of these things that I've just mentioned, uh, they exchanged. They 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 did the transaction among themselves. A single transaction in the barter system is splitted into two transactions in a money economy. The person producing rice will sell rice. First transaction. The money thus earned will be used to buy cloth, second transaction, money thus becomes the medium of exchange. You see, here's a very important thing that you should, you can be easily confused if you don't pay attention here. A single transaction in the barter system is split into two transactions in money economy. You see, when barter system is associated with money economy, it takes two shapes. It's split it into two parts. Now what are those two parts? Let's, fi let's find out. Suppose a person produces rice. Rice wo produce karta hai. Uh, so what, what will he do? He will, he will sell the rice. And then the money does earn. So after selling the rice, he will get some money. He will get some money. It's a uh, 1000 rupees. After selling some quintals of rice, he, he must have earned uh, 1000 rupees. Say. And then with that amount of money is going to buy something else that could be uh, groceries, that could be clothing, that could be an electronic device, that could be anything else. So you can see when barter system is transferred into money system, it takes two shapes. Because in money system, you first have to exchange that commodity into the form of money and then when you have the money in your hand, Suppose I produce uh, 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 potatoes. I have to go to a market or, or to a wholesaler. And when I sell that, I get the money. I get the, the paper money in my hand. Say 1,000 rupees, say 2,000 rupees I have in my hand. And with that 2,000 rupees, whatever I want to buy. If I, if I love books, I would buy books. If I, love, if, I want, if I want to have groceries, I would have groceries. If I want to have other things, I would have other things. So that's how it is, you know, but when you transfer barter system into money economy, this thing completely changes. It, it just, uh, it, it takes two shapes. Pehle bejke, money transfer karna barter system I give you this, uh, 
this, this marker that I have for my Kindle and you give me something else. That was barter system. But in money economy, it doesn't work that way. You know, you have to first, I have to first change this uh, uh, into money and then things may happen. You know? then, then with the money that I, that I would have, I can buy other things. So in here it says that money here in the modern economy works as a medium. This is a medium. You see, if you have money in your pocket, people say, you know, money is honey, money is everything. When you have money, you can buy everything. That's true. If you have money in your pocket, you can buy anything. Suppose you want to buy a cloth, you can. If you want to buy a book, you can. You want to have a kilogram of apple, you, you, you can have. You want to buy a bike, you, um, uh, any kind of motor vehicle, you can do that. You see, you can do anything if you have money. So it means anything you have, anything you produce, you first have to sell that and, 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 and transform, transfer that into, into paper money. And uske baad, so what I'm trying to tell you time and again is this when you shift from barter system to money economy that exchange among commodities change, change into two parts first you need to sell the commodity transfer it into money and then with that money you can buy another commodity if you commodity commodity now it doesn't matter if full price or half price but you have to sell it again have money and then buy for example if I just give you a, a little example of, of buying a cell phone and selling a cell phone how can you do that in order to buy a cell phone can I go to a market and give the cell phone that I am using right now to, to teach you uh, uh, Although exchange is there, right now exchange is there, just think about, you know, if I want to buy a brand new phone with the phone that I have right now, I go and ask them, give me an Apple i10, Apple, what is that, Apple 10X, give me a 10X, they will not give. What they're going to ask is that your phone is some Chinese company, we don't recognize that, we don't recognize that, you go, sell it, then I have to come back, I have to sell it to somebody. Suppose I bought it with 16,000, I'll get only 8,000, then I'll get 8,000, then I'll go to the shop. फिर जाके नया फोन में खरीद सकता हूँ उसी तरह से वैन आई बाइंड सेल फोन फिर उसी सेल फोन से दूसरा सेल फोन नहीं खरीद सकता इमीडिएटली इफ आई चेंज माई माइंड आई हैव टू सेल इट ट्रांसफर दैट अमाउंट इन टू पेपर मनी फिर पेपर मनी से खरीद सकता हूँ दैट इज वट दे आर ट्राइंग टू सेट इन बार्टर सिस्टम इट इज जस्ट द एक्सचेंज बिटवीन कमोडिटीज यू नो नीड टू चेंज दैट इन टू एनी फॉर्म ऑफ मनी बट वेन इट कम्स टू मनी इकोनॉमी एनी थिंग यू प्रोड्यूस यू हैव टू फर्स्ट एक्सचेंज इट इन टू पेपर मनी एंड देन एनी अदर ट्रांसेक्शन एनी एनी Anything else that 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 you're supposed to buy, you want to buy, you can buy. Okay, uh, yeah, that's I think I think that's over. Money thus becomes the medium of exchange, and that that because of that, money is a medium of exchange. Now my question is to you: is is is, is this? Have you understood how money is a medium? How with money you can buy numerous things, not just one thing. With money you can. Uh, uh, ultimately buy almost everything you see if you, people say you have money you have everything that's true because money is a medium of exchange with money you can buy anything uh, other than certain certain services we, we we can't like you cannot buy me the service that i'm providing you you cannot buy a doctor's service you know they, they may say i won't i won't if i'm a very good teacher or a fantastic surgeon I may say I don't want to give you. I don't want to give you. I don't want to give you my service. You cannot buy me. You cannot buy those things. You know. You cannot buy the love of your mother. Can't buy that. Uh, you, you, don't, you cannot ask somebody to you know you know take care of you like your brother brother does or your sister does. You know things like that cannot be bought. But other than that, everything has a has a value, and money acts as a medium of exchange. Okay, put your phone into into the silent mode again. I, I can hear some roaster. Point number two. Money acts as a standard of measurement of values of goods and services. That's that's very important. How does money act as a as a measurement? Okay, let's find out. All economic goods have price, have prices. Uh, the things that you have in your house and the things that a shopkeeper has in his shop and the things that we have in a mall, everything has a price tag. Everything has price. The value in exchange expressed in terms of money is price. You see, the value that you give for that commodity, you know, when you go to mall, you have t-shirts and you have categories of t-shirts. 
you know, one t-shirt may cost you only 200, another may 350, another may 500, another may 1000. And if you go on brands that may cost you like 2000, 3000, 4000, 5000 and the amount goes on like that. What I'm telling here is this, that the exchange value of the things is the price. You know, the, 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 the yeah, the value of value in exchange, the value that you have to, that, I, that you have to pay in return is the price. You want to buy something and the value that you have to pay is called its price. Money is the common unit of measurement. So that price factor is the common unit and that's how you take a measurement of things. Uh, that, that's how you that's how you measure it. You know, how, how do, you, do you measure it? Suppose you, you want to have sugar at the same time you want to have a t-shirt at the same time you want to have something else. Now you see everything has uh, a, a unit of money, a measurement. Everything has a, uh, a measurement. Uh, when you go on, on having a kilogram of sugar, it has a measurement. It, it has a price tag on it. When you, when you go on buying a t-shirt, it has a price tag on it. When you go on buying something else, it has a price tag on it. So, it, it becomes, you know, everything is measurable now. Everything is measurable. You know what is the value of this thing, what is the value of that thing, what is the value of this. Every other thing has value. Hence, money works as a measure. You know, you can measure everything with money. Suppose, it's inappropriate to say, but right now, every service has a measurement. You go to a doctor to get yourself checked, there is a measurement. There is a, there is a unit of money you need to pay. Right now, it's 400 is, the, is, is common everywhere. You go, go see any doctor, you have to pay 400 rupees as their charge, as their fee. Similarly, you go to any teacher, the prices may vary. Uh, they may take in a month. So, everything has a measurement. And money, that's why money is, money acts as a measure. Pahle wale portion mein, pahle wale topic mein hamne padha tha, money acts as a medium. Right now we are discussing that money acts as a measure. It, it puts a value to everything that you have around you. Just, just look around your house, you have many things. And every other thing that you have in your house, it had a price tag. And you paid that amount in exchange to buy that. So from that you can have an idea that money has measurement. The value of all economic goods and services are expressed in prices only. So all the economic goods that we see in the market, all the things that we buy from the malls, from, from the local markets and from the grocery shops in or around our, our local area, everything has, has a price. All these services uh, have a price. All these goods have a price. And that price is expressed in the form of measure. And money is, money acts as a measure. You see, you want to buy something, you pay 500 rupees. You want to buy something else, you, you pay 150 rupees. You want to buy a kilogram of fish. Uh, now again, the prices of, of the fishes that we have in the market, they, they, they vary. So, what is the Money acts as a unit. Unit of measure. Okay, Unit of measure, that's what you need to understand. Have you understood that? You know, these things are very critical. You know, I can go on go on discussing. Why am I putting emphasis to these things? I am putting emphasis to these things so that it becomes easier for, for you to understand. You know, the moment you understand it, once you understand it, you no longer need me. That's the thing. You no longer need me. And you can read it by yourself and, and, and have a complete understanding of the topic and you can play with the topic. You know, you can, you can write your own answers. And you should always aim at being independent. You know, no teacher should make you uh, should make you dependent and that's why I strongly oppose this. I strongly oppose this but but sometimes you know as a part of the system I can't do certain things. You know? I want to make somebody independent and th this, this doesn't happen. Anyways, at least a few of you I have and I don't know how many of, of, of them are following me on YouTube. You know, people don't follow me on YouTube. I can't advertise myself to follow me on YouTube. You know, That's cheap. I've not started Yes. All right, all right. Stick with me till your till your phone dies. Till your phone dies. You know, stick with me till your phone dies. For now, you put your phone on silent mode. 
Uh, every single day you, you give your phone a full charge, you know. I, I hope everybody has an inverter in their houses. So, usko full charge karo. Full charge karne ke baad, uh, we can like take the class. Always have full charge in the phone. Let's discuss point three. Money acts as a standard of deferred payments. What does that mean? Deferred payments are payments made later on or not at the point of time when the product or the service is delivered to the customer. You see, what is deferred money? You need to understand. Deferred money is a kind of money that you don't pay when you buy something. And uh, that's, uh, that's where I need to discuss about cash on delivery. Cash on delivery is the thing. You see, you buy something online on, on, on today's date, but you don't get the product on, like right now. Do you get it right now? You don't get it right now. Uh, similarly, there are other things for which you pay, but you, 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 you don't make the payment. You may make the payment later on. You don't make the payment right then. Us payment nahi karte. That's, that's what is known as deferred money or deferred payments. It is taking commodities on credit. So that, that is what is called taking things on credit. Credit may almost many families right now buy groceries on credit and when they have the salary, monthly salary, they, they you know, mitigate the, the amount to the shopkeepers. That's how, they, that's how they do it. That's how they deal with that. Accounts of all such payments are expressed in terms of money. You see, things that you buy on credit, uh, uh, when you buy something on credit, you don't pay money. You know? there, there is an ag agreement and, and based on that agreement, you pay the money on a later point of time, but every other transaction of such such credit system is is dealt with is dealt in in terms of money. How? Let's 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 discuss. The transaction between the creditors and the debitors similarly do not involve uh, instantaneous payments. There are cases of deferred payments. The, the de de debtor takes the loan today but repays it later on. Okay. Now what is a uh, what is the what is deferred payment in one word? If, if if you understand the concept of taking loans, when you take loan from a bank, uh, you agree to the bank that you're gonna pay an amount of interest on that. But when you take the loan, you don't pay that money uh, on the very same day. You know, you, you take the loan and then you decide that you're going to pay it uh, monthly or in three months or in six months according to your plans. That's how you decide to pay the money, pay the amount. In here it says that uh, it does not involve any payments. You know, when, when, the, when the creditor, one who gives you the credit is, uh, is, is also not getting any money and one who gets uh, the amount he gets the amount, but he doesn't have to pay that that that, that amount at that point of time. Us vakt usko pay nahi karna padta, and that's what is called deferred payments. The debtor takes loan today, but repays it later on. You see, you may take a loan from the bank today, but you repay that loan slowly, which means not right now. You you repay the loan later on, not now. The account of transaction is maintained in the form of money and that account of, uh, of amount that you have taken from the bank or from any other company, that measurement is kept in the form of money. It means if you had taken money from somebody, for example, if you have taken money from uh, say from a bank, what is the amount have you, you might have taken? You might have taken say... Um, 20,000 rupees, you might have taken 20,000 rupees and when you, when you have taken 20,000 rupees, you don't have to return 20,000 rupees right then. Uh, you, you decide to, you come with, uh, with, with accord with the banks and they have certain rules and regulations and you follow those rules and regulations and then you pay them amount of money. What I, what I really want you to understand is this, that deferred payments means the payments uh, that the money, the loan that you take from the bank, you don't have to pay it right then. You have to pay it later on. Cash on deli delivery comes under that as well. And uh, you pay it, pay it at, at, a, at a later amount of time. 
एंड दैट एंटायर ट्रांजेक्शन दैट एंटायर हिसाब जो पूरा जो हिसाब है वो मनी के फॉर्म में रखा जाता है पूरा हिसाब को एकदम पूरा मनी के फॉर्म में रखा जाता है दैट्स व्हाई यू सी इफ यू कनेक्ट योर लोन्स विद योर बैंक अकाउंट तीन हजार छह सौ रुपए बैंक अकाउंट से डेबिट हो जाते हैं तो पूरा हिसाब दैट एंटायर मेजरमेंट इज इज टेकन विद द हेल्प ऑफ मनी आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड दैट पॉइंट नाउ आर लास्ट पॉइंट एंड विद फिनिश बिकॉज इट्स फ्राइडे मनी फंक्शन एज द स्टोर ऑफ Value. This one I have, I have discussed a couple of times. That's why it's the same thing I'm telling you. Same thing, you know. Stick with me as as long as you can. Okay, money money functions as the store of value because I'm recording this video as well, so you will have it on YouTube. You don't have to worry about that. You'll have it on YouTube. You can check it again. The thing that I'm saying. So please put your call on mute. Don't have to worry about these things. You know, right now I've started doing this. So I'll start. I'll record every other class that I give you, so that in in later amount of time, if you need to go back and recheck, you can do that. Put your call on silent, on mute. That's the right phrase. Okay. So money functions as the store of value. How does that happen? Commodity money cannot be stored up. as it does not have durability that's the problem we had with barter system in barter system uh, commodities were 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 money you know commodities were money now commodities as you know they are perishable you know they they don't last for a longer period of time uh, after a certain certain period of time they come to an end Uh, they perish so commodities cannot be stored cannot cannot have a store value they don't have a store store value you cannot uh, 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 store yes so i said that commodity uh, money cannot be stored for a longer period of time because that's the same problem we had with barter system uh, because it, it 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 was perishable it did not have durability saving cannot be done in the form of commodity money you know you cannot save Uh, a, a huge amount of money or a lot of money in the form of in the form of commodity money you can't do that durability is one of the characteristics of money you know money must have durability we have talked about that yeah, under the characteristics we've talked about that, that but that money must have uh what we call durability you know it, if it if it's easily perishable it it is not money a paper money as we have said as we have seen It, it can long last if you take care of the money, and uh, paper money can be saved since it is durable. It can be saved. It can be stored up. Value of goods and services may be stored up in the form of money. You see, in the form of money we can we can store up. Uh, we, we in, the, in the form of money we can we can store up uh, the value of goods and the services. You know the, the services that we want later in our life. Uh, things that we we want to buy later later in our life, we can do that, and we can do that in the form of money. But because we have paper money, we can save that for a longer period of time, and uh, and and it is because of that money has store value. Money can be stored up for a longer period of time, and by money I mean paper money right now. Let's focus. As and when. the goods and the services are needed money can be easily converted into these goods and services suppose you you earn an amount of money now nowadays you have a job money can be stored up and in future when you want to buy certain goods you want want to avail yourself with 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 certain services you want to buy something electronic or something that's necessary for your lifestyle you want to have a service for example you want to know how to you want to learn how to swim how to learn a language things like that you can you can avail that anytime you want that's why people have uh, deposit accounts and things like that people have that since money has store value all these things can be done very easily you won't have any problem with that however money will continue to act as a store of value as long as its own value does not fall rapidly as i said uh, uh the fall of the, of of the value of money ultimately uh, will 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 make the money that you have stored up 
vague. For example, suppose your father has stored some 40 lakhs of rupees and he was a very good businessman, say 20 years ago. This 40 lakh rupees in today's economy has no value. I mean, uh, it has value, but it's not a big amount. Right now people are earning crores of rupees and it's easy for them. You know, It's a big deal. So as long as money does not fall, the value of money does not fall in the market, store value is okay. The money that you were, that you were storing right now, suppose if you are saving, 10 rupees, 15 rupees, 20 rupees, 100 rupees, you are saving and you are saving say some 25,000 rupees or say some 2,000 rupees. But if money the value of money, you know, if, if the value of money comes down, then what will happen? Then it will be a big deal. If you wanted to buy something, you, you were saving that amount of money because you wanted to buy something, you wanted to buy some good, goods and services, you would, wouldn't be able to buy that. So that problem will come. As long as the value of money does not fall, things are okay, storing is okay. But even if the value of money is falling, we need to save money. And to save money means it has to have a store value. And right now in today's economy, paper money has store value. If and when the value of money falls rapidly, money may be replaced by gold and silver or land as a store of value. You see, if the value of money falls rapidly, what do people do? Uh, people do something very, very, very funny. You know, people change that into gold or silver or they, they start buying a piece of land. And in future time, uh, the, the value of gold, as you know, you know if that's pure uh, or, or silver, uh, it, it, it would definitely have, because they are non-renewable resources, obviously they are, they are not unlimited and in the future they would definitely have uh, a great value. Similarly, if, if somebody buys a piece of land, that would have value as well. So when, 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 when the value of money falls in the market, what do people do? People start buying things, for example, kya kya cheeze log kharitte hain, land kharitte hain, suna kharitte hain, silver kharitte hain. The first two functions of money are known as primary functions. So here we have talked about four functions. First two function, money as a medium and money as a measure. These are known as primary functions. You have to note it down. These are the primary functions of money. And the last two are known as secondary functions of money. Questions may appear on that too. What are the primary, you know, write about the primary functions of money or write about the secondary functions of money. You need to know which ones are the primary functions of money and which ones are the secondary functions of money. Primary functions of money include money as a medium of exchange, money as a measurement and secondary function of money includes money as a, as a deferred payment and money as a store of value. Apart from these four functions, there are also certain uh, contingent functions of money. For example, money transferred from the rich may be utilized for the benefit of the poor, thereby reducing economic inequalities. You know, there are many other many other functions that we have. If uh, money, uh, if a rich guy transfers money for the welfare of the poor guy, then that amount of money can be used to mitigate the inequalities that we have in the society and right now is, 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 the, is the right time to elaborate these examples um, because uh, it's, it's a pandemic situation and many rich people are dis distributing food, people who have like a government job, um, they, are, they are distributing food, they are distributing necessary medicines and things like that. So money can act as, as a medium of, of mitigating inequalities in the society or dealing with the problems of poverty that those are the other functions of money that we are not discussing here. We, we have discussed only the first four primary functions of money here in this lesson, but keep in mind that money has other functions as well. So that's it about uh, this class. We have uh, talked about three of the characteristics of money and four of the functions of money. All you need to do is to recap, reread, and I'll try to upload this on YouTube. YouTube as, as as soon as I compile it into one file and then may upload karunga. you can see for your reference from now on all the classes that I take jab tak school nahi khulta hai, I'll try to upload to usse tumhara bhi fayda kisi aur ka bhi fayda ho jayega you know so it's, it's good you know I, at least that's what I can do you know I'm a private teacher itta paisa nahi hai khud khane ka paisa nahi hai that's not entirely true. Khane ka paisa hai, but I don't have extra money to give people. Extra money is not there. The sufficient amount of money I have. But I think the service 
this is what I can give. So it, feel free to share the links that I give you with the students who need things, you know, like genuinely to achieve students and people who need, as a lot of people who make mockery out of these things. We don't want to, you know, help those people. They're negative people, you know. If you see someone genuine from any other school, no problem. You can share the links with them. They can learn. Even share my exercises with them, you know, the answers with them. That there is no problem. But keep in mind that that individual has to be a needy individual. That student has to be a good student who wants to learn, who does not make fun of things. But uh, yeah, it won't be Now if you have any questions, you can ask me.